Hey, what's going on, everyone? Okay, so uh, we got in the last last video we got our the number pad working. So let's see what we did. We got the number pad working uh, a little bit. There's still a few bugs, and we got the clear buttons working. So I can now do two. Right, notice that it doesn't it doesn't clear that zero, which maybe I'd like it to do. Um, but we can clear this. I can obviously add multiple zeros. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. Uh, but really, we'd like to start seeing some math happening. So three plus three, right? It doesn't doesn't do anything yet. So it, first of all, actually, let's talk about that. So if I do three plus three, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see it reset. So it doesn't say zero. Now it says obviously zero thirty three. So that's not good. So I'd like to see it reset. Um, I'd like to know that I'm in the process of adding. I haven't clicked equal yet, but like, so there's no indicator right now that I'm actually doing adding or subtraction or multiplication or anything like that. So uh, we're gonna want some kind of a color change going on there. And then what else? Oh yeah, then if I do three and I click plus and then I type three again, like obviously like the display is gonna be displaying something different. Well, let's say I do three plus five. So I do three and I do plus, and then I start typing five. If it's clearing that screen, I need to remember that, that previous value, that three that I have. So I need to save that value somewhere. So let's start working in, in kind of like those general directions. So that was a lot of options that we have to do. Um, maybe the best thing to do first, let's worry about those colors. Actually, I think that's I think that's what I'm gonna do first. Uh, so, in this case, for these operators, I do need outlets for everything. Okay, so because I need to know I need to know more than kind of just went just what was clicked. I guess there's different ways of doing it, so you don't you don't need it, but that this. The way that I will show you is just one way that you could do it. Uh, the other thing I could do is obviously just compare with what text button was was clicked. That would work too. Like or like what what is the text of the button that was clicked? That works too. That's fine. And button. What, what happened? Oh, there we go. And equal button. Okay. And then I am I am still gonna need an action here. So on operator click. And then let's make that UI button. Okay, so when that operator clicks, I want to change it. I want to change it. I want to change the color of it, basically. So I have to, I need two different states or two different colors, you could say, for these operator buttons. I need to know if one is clicked and uh, like one color for it's clicked and one color for it not being clicked. So uh, I'm going to create a let on color equal, what did, we, well, what did we say? Let's do the off color first. Off color equals UI color dot, I think we did system orange. Okay, so then let's on color equal UI color dot, let's see, yeah, we, we just have a normal orange. So that's kind of what we want. Let's see what that does for us. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't need that. So what I'm going to do is just sender dot background color equals, uh, let's say on button, on color. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Equal work. Oh, because of course I only set up the action for the one button, right? So equal work. I need to control click and set each of these 
to be that same action. Okay, now they're all linked up. And by the way, you can actually check what something is linked to. So there's two ways. So you can see here, if I highlight over this, you'll see everything that, uh, like you'll, you'll see a lot of information about it. So uh, you'll see multiplication, subtract, add, equal, when I highlight over here. Um, but also, same, same kind of thing. So if I highlight on the IB outlets, you'll see what button in the display or like, like where the button on the layout is. But also if I right click on this itself, you'll see that uh, you'll see that I have, it gives me the list of all of the events as well as like referencing outlets. It tells me which view controller or where the referencing outlet is. In this case, my view controller is just named view controller. But then you'll also see like, oh, the touch up inside action is on view controller, on operator clicked, okay? So that helps you find, that, that will help you find where these actions are. When you start getting, right now it doesn't matter, but when you start getting lots of screens and lots of view controllers, it starts to matter. Okay, so we're able to click that and change the color. It would be nice if when I clicked one, it would turn off the other ones, okay? So I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna do something like that. I'm gonna have a, a helper method. This is, this is why I wanted all those outlets, but I'm gonna create a function. Function, oh, reset operator colors. We don't need parameters there. We don't need a return type. Oh. I'm just gonna say divide button dot background color equals off, off color, right? So divide button and multiplication button, subtract button, add button. Oh, equal button, it's supposed to be equal button. Okay, equal button. And then whenever I click on anything, and it's not perfect yet, we're just doing it one step at a time, I'm gonna reset my operator colors and then change the one that actually got clicked. Okay, so let's check that out. Okay, so I click multiplication, click subtraction. Okay, so it's kind of coming together. We're not actually doing the math yet. That's fine. Okay, so what did we say next? Let's actually get rid of that. Let's get rid of that leading zero. Okay. So on number clicked, we're actually going to do. Oh, let's see. How do we want to do this? Well, if the number is zero, there's actually, there's a couple of things we can do here. Okay. Um, let's, let's get rid of that. Well, we have to reset anyway. Okay. So yeah, what's the best way to, what's the best way to do this? Okay. So this is, this might seem a little tricky at first, but, uh, so I'm going to create a value. So like I said, we already have to reset. If I click two plus and I type five, I need to reset that number anyway. So basically what I'm gonna do is if, if the value is zero, like when we initially start, I'm just, I'm just going to reset it, okay? So var, I'll call it should reset equals, and right at the start, I'm gonna say should reset equals true, okay? Then when a number is clicked, I'm gonna say if, should reset. Well, now should reset equals false. But then also display string. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just equals sender dot 
oh, sorry, just equals text. Okay, I don't need to append anything because in the case of, so, so let's, let me explain why I did it this way. So in the case of us first starting out, initially I said we should reset equals true because I know there's just that zero there, right? So as soon as you click on any number, it's going to say, oh, okay, oh, if I should reset, which is true, then I'm going to capture, um, instead of appending, I'm just going to capture whatever that text is. Right, so I've now, it says zero, I go to click one, but should reset is true. So I'm, I'm gonna say my display string is now just one, but the next thing that I click should not reset, okay? And then if I'm not resetting, that is the case where I'm just appending. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's zero, right? But because we just started, should reset is true. So I'm gonna click two and it just, it doesn't append, it just, uh, it just overwrites that number. Okay, now I type three, you know, whatever. So, and then same thing when I clear. Okay, well, so there's, there's our next task because I just tried to clear it, right? Now it says zero and I do nine. Okay. So that means what that's telling me is maybe when I click that clear button, we need to set should reset back equal to true. Where did that go? Uh, number click, clear click. Okay. So should reset equals true. Let's put this down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but let's put it down at the bottom of my list. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. Okay, so seven, eight, nine, clear, it's zero. Three, two, one, clear, clear. Okay, cool. I still have this problem where I can type in a ton of zeros. I don't like that, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, so that's that should be pretty easy to fix as well. So on number clicked, I already have this guard statement and I'm doing a guard let to unwrap this optional, but I can also say something like, uh, let's say if text equals uh, zero and display string already equals zero, Then, right, then we need to return. Is that right? Let me think about that. So, oh, well, I'm, the problem is I'm saying if, what I'm really trying to do, let me, let me write it how I'm saying it, okay? So instead of doing it right there, we can, we can clean this up a little bit, but the way that I said it was basically like this, just so that it's not confusing. So this is guarding Right? This is why guards can be confusing sometimes. This is doing a guard to say, try to unwrap this text. If that doesn't work, return. The way that I phrased my if statement is, if text equals zero, so if the button that I just clicked is zero and the display string equals zero, so the thing that you're, that you're trying to touch is zero and you're already showing zero, then just return. We don't need to do anything. We could put that up in our uh, guard statement and we probably will a little bit, but this is just, this is the way that I said it. So um, I think that's a little bit less confusing. I think the way I was saying it was gonna be confusing. So now let's test it out. Zero, cool. So we can still type in as many zeros as we want. We have this other issue, you know, we, we'll, have to, we'll have to change change it so that we can, we limit it to some amount of numbers, but that's fine. But for now, we've gotten rid of that extra, that leading zero issue. Okay. So we got, 
button's working pretty well. We don't have the sign working yet. We can work on that. Um, let's actually do some operators. In the next video, we're actually going to make it so we can save the old value as well as do some do some math on these actual operators. All right, so stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.